Welcome, everybody. It's Thursday, so you know what that means. It's another episode of InfoSec Unplugged. I am your humble and gracious host, Davin Jackson, also known as DJX Alpha. Thank you for joining. I know you guys could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. Um, and I know you're not probably here for me this week because I've been getting a lot of uh, a me- lot of messages, a lot of people in the comments, super excited about this week's episode. Um, but before I bring the guests on, you know, I got to do, I got to pay a couple bills. So first, you know, this show is uh, sponsored by Udemy online training platform, over a hundred thousand courses. Uh, you can learn just about anything. And I believe there's a sale going on right now. So make sure you go check them out and grab yourself some cup, a couple courses. Like I said, there's always a sale. If you miss out for one, just wait about 10 minutes or now nah, I'm lying Wait like another week or so. And there will all, oh, there'll be another one. Um, also you could check out Webroot. Webroot's an award-winning cybersecurity and antivirus software that protects against, um, a lot of, uh, exploits going on on the internet. So you can protect your computer setup is set up is really easy to do. Um, it's, the prices are really affordable and it doesn't really bog down your PC. So make sure you go check out Webroot as well. Make sure I put that those links in the description. Cause like I said, um, any guy, anytime you click a link in the description and you support the support the product, it does go back to supporting the show. I am an affiliate. I have to get that out of the way. And finally, um, if you are familiar with the tech and cybersecurity um, industry, especially with intelligence and digital forensics, um, I know you hear a lot of s- stories about trying to find a job and crazy requirements. But a um, friend of the show, DFIR Diva, created a website called GetYourStartCareers.com where job seekers and employers can find that entry-level role and don't have to worry about the hassle of making sure that you know they're the right fit because they might want something like 10 years of experience for an entry-level position. Um, they, go, they do a lot of the work for you to make sure that the entry-level position is indeed entry-level. And I believe uh, she's on the show right now. I believe they're um, running a special right now for employers who are wanting to join the platform to also help um, find some people. So please go check out GetYourStartCareers.com and support them as well. All right. So we've gotten all of that out of the way. Like I said, I've been getting a lot of comments. Oh, wait, let me just make sure I put uh, put them in here, put that in here as well. So I've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of feedback. Looking forward to this episode. I think it was one of the people that one of the groups that were highly recommended Um, and I've been kind of paying attention to them for a while too, and seeing what they were doing. Um, they're doing a lot of great things in the community. I think they're on almost like every week, you know, trying to help people, especially women and people of color, um, and more diverse candidates learn about cybersecurity and penetration testing, doing like online capture the flag stuff. So, um, definitely wanted to get them out here to amplify their voice a little bit more and to, you know, just introduce y'all to some amazing women. So without further ado, <clears throat> Please welcome my guests, Tanisha. Let me bring her on, and Rebecca, also known hello, hello. as some of the ladies, also known as some of the ladies from the Black Girls Hat Group. So please, uh, Pack, welcome them to the show. Ladies, hey. thank you for joining. It shocked me that the camera us. was I'm right sorry. up on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to everybody who had to see that. It's all right. You know, it's, it's it's only it's only live. It's only it's only live on the internet. No one's gonna see it. <laughs> Low key. You know, you you know one you know once stuff goes on the internet, you you could take it right off. It's, it's no problem. Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> so again, um, ladies, thank you for joining. Um, I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to you know come on the show and talk about what you guys got going on or you ladies got going on. Um, so before I go ahead and talk, yeah, they don't want to hear me. They want to talk about y'all. So, uh, Tanisha, how did you get started? And, um, and then followed by Rebecca. Sure. Sure. Um, first let let me just say that, uh, your, your lead in music is absolutely dope. Like I, it's worth the price (laughs) of the mission. (laughs) Um, but, um, I, I started black girls hack to, um, try to kind of bridge the gap between what people were learning in, um, school and what they needed to in order to be able to get jobs, you know, because there is a big gap in my mind, like between what you need and what you're taught. Um, I, I have masters in um, cybersecurity and 
you know, there was nothing hands on in any of my programs. And I, I realized after I started um, Black Girls Hack as an Instagram page that there were a lot of people out there that were just like me who were trying to get um, hands on experience so they can be able to get their foot in the door. Um, so, you know, we started off just doing um, workshops and study groups and um, just anything ethical hacking so that we can try to get people with the hands on experience so that they can get into the interviews and be able to say, hey, you know, I've got this experience in these other areas, but then I've also got, you know, hands on experience and penetration testing and ethical hacking and capture the flags. And, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, increase the diversity in cybersecurity. Um, and I just want to say that, like, the, the squad is absolutely um, amazing. Um, you know, we have, you know, a group of, you know, all genders and all um, racial components that are um, have joined us and come out with us every week to, you know, ha hack things. And I, I definitely think we have like a dope group of people um, who are, are supporting us. So um, I, I really think that this is going to be like, you know, we're going to start seeing a whole lot more color and melanin in uh, cybersecurity in the future. OK, OK. Rebecca, what about you? Um, props to Tanisha for that beautiful eloquence. It just like flowed <laughs> off the top. She's ready to go. Um, where, I was like, wait, how did I get started in what? Like in IT in general, cyber? Okay. Uh, <laughs> for Black Girls Hack specifically, um, I kind of like tripped and fell into IT. That's what I always tell people because I had, I felt like I had no control over it. It just was something that kept drawing me and uh, opportunity kept presenting itself. And then I was like a sponge to learn as much and get to know as many people and network and everything. And uh, last year, I kind of happened upon uh, Black Girls Hack and I was like, man, this is kind of fresh. And uh, Tanisha was like, what's your plans for world domination? And I was like, hi, I want to take over the world, Pinky. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I just was part because I wanted to learn and be around other people who wanted to learn and do all that and then we had an opening for uh volunteers and um since she gave the opportunity at were asked you know who wanted to uh, be a part of leadership and the board and i i messaged her separately and i was like this imposter syndrome kind of got in the way otherwise i would have uh tried to apply for a leadership and, and she was like hey no not in my presence and kind of helped me get <laughs> over myself and apply for that and thankfully so far so good Nice. So now, um, so Rebecca, you said you actually started out in IT. Is the same for you, Tanisha? Are you act did you actually start in technology? Um, I did. So like I um, was actually in um, IT and and, um, and like quality assurance um, when I first um, got into the field. I went to school for electrical and computer engineering. So like I always knew that I was going to be doing something in tech. I think at some point, like I, I made a segue towards like um, medicine before I realized that I, you know, I wasn't really a uh, cool with blood. Um, so then I swerved back. <laughs> so I've been um, doing, uh, you know, IT information assurance, just basically tech consulting for like the past 10, 15 years. Oh, okay. So, oh, so, so, so you're not new to the game. You're, you, you go here. Tech and I go together, but um, yeah. <laughs> what, what, I had just started trying to get into cybersecurity. Like I tell people I'm like maybe 25% in um, in cybersecurity and I've been trying to, you know, get my foot fully in the door. And that kind of like, um, you know, moved me to try to, you know, do Black Girls Hack because like I realized that there were people out there who didn't have the degrees, who didn't have, you know, the experience and all the background and they were probably still having trouble getting in, in the door. Like I can't tell you to this day, like, you know, how hard it is um, to, you know, try to get interviews, to try to get into the door. Um, and part of that may be, you know, because I'm a black woman whose name is Tanisha, you know, you see me coming, you know? Um, so like, I, I think that that's why I'm always talking, trying to talk about, you know, trying to increase diversity in cybersecurity and how we can kind of reduce some of the, the bias and, um, the lack of melanin in the field. You know, I'm, whenever someone says, hey, do you want to come and speak at our conference? Or, hey, do you want to, you know, I'm there. If for no other reason, then that gives people the opportunity to see, you know, a black face who is out there, who's trying to advocate for people, um, especially black women to try to get into to cybersecurity. Right. Oh. Um, so, I you know, sir, I will continue to hype up Tanisha, like randomly put my little insert. So just how she just said, she's a black girl named Tanisha. I'm a black girl named Becky. And the good thing about black girl tech is like <laughs> the full gamut, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, balance each other out. There you go. So um so again like I said they they didn't come here for me. They came here for y'all. So I don't know if you can see the chat, 
But uh, you have DFIR Diva, who I just shouted out her website earlier. Um, Professor Black Ops, another friend of the show, best intro music in the game. Put a little mama's cooking on the show. Listen, I don't want no, I don't want no smoke with Kwame Brown. So um, yes, I, I'm all for the mama's cooking. Yeah, if y'all don't know if y'all been following up on that, but he he been kind of on a tear lately. Kalila Scott, another friend of the show, says, "Hey Wolfpack, how's everyone been?" And then she followed up with saying, good to see the squad in full effect. Uh, let's see. I know I saw JB in here. I don't see it in the chat right now, but shout out to JB. JB. I saw D. Mary Galloway. So. Oh, I, I was I was getting to her. I, I know she's been. Hold on. Wait. And then we have um, we have the, the, the infamous anonymous joining the show once again. Shout out to anonymous. Uh, if you guys if, if you ladies aren't familiar with anonymous, you, you will be. Very soon. <laughs> uh, Cyberscriber asks, how many pop figures do you have? Too many. Um, I have this wall here. There's another wall that goes over. I think the last time I counted, it's somewhere above. Is I'm probably close to 500 by right about now. And and I am keep getting more because I've pre-ordered a bunch and forgot about them. And I just keep getting them in the mail. So uh, yeah, there, goes, there goes JB, Cyber Insight. Let's see. Alshon Banks says what's up looking forward to this content see he told you uh anonymous says hold on uh i heard he has a pop figure for every soul saved by the one true cloud see i told you you're gonna (laughs) you're gonna gonna see a lot of that um dfir diva says hey to both of you ladies same thing with anonymous l style Got given the applause, and there is the Mary Galloway. Shout out to Mary Galloway, another friend of the show. Um, I I this real quick, but I was grouped in with AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. So, um, Mary, I need to talk to you, so I'll, I'll holler at you. Uh, let's see, CCIE by 30. Dara J. Footman says, on, Hello. Kalila Scott says the organization is awesome. Then we have Coach Tony. Let's see, Tony Endura Briscoe, Coach T. And let's see, he goes, I want to be the voice to push the support. New world for me. Lots to learn, and I'm all in. Well, welcome. You are you are in good hands. Let's see. Israel says hello. Another <laughs> says, love the pops. And then Mary says, I love y'all. Feelings mutual. All right. So, again, everybody who is here in the chat, you know, you guys are the wolf pack. So, you can ask anything. Just I, all I ask is keep it respectful, keep it clean, keep it respectful, keep it respectful to the ladies. Um, or, again, since I just talked about Kwame Brown, I will sprinkle my mama's seasoning on <laughs> and, and match that energy. So, ladies. All right. So, so now, Tanisha, you said you, 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 you have a back well you have an education background so speak speak on that a little bit um just just because you know and over the last couple of weeks i've talked to a few people actually the last couple of months uh from professor black ops who's here i'm pretty sure he'll be happy to know that you're you're also in the education field mary galloway is another professor um Dwayne dunstan I, i've had a, i've had a bunch of people on and we've we've talked heavily about um you know, bridging that education gap. So if you want to start with that, uh, you know, your education background, and then we'll get into, you know, get it, get into the the bridging the gap talk. Yeah. So I I actually just uh, recently started last semester um, with uh, teaching cybersecurity and um, algorithms and computer science um, at the college level. Um, And it's absolutely been eye opening. You know, I I know from my experience, just being a student um, for all of these years that you know, there's a, a big gap between what you need and, you know, what you ha- need to get a, be able to get a job. Um, but, you know, I didn't see that until I, I kind of started looking at things from the students' perspectives. You know, I see um, a lot of students who, you know, are not at the point where they need to be in order to be able to go and get jobs, you know, based on like, hey, I'm a senior, you know, I've done four years of education, I should be ready now to go and enter the, ro- the workforce. And I don't think that they're getting that. I don't think, for example, like the computer science students are getting enough cybersecurity education um, because really, you know, I think that a computer, a coder, a developer you know, that's not armed with sec- cybersecurity foundations um, is definitely going to be at a disadvantage going into the workforce um, because, you know, most of the time security is an afterthought. 
you know, we kind of want to talk about, you know, security being baked in. And in order for us to be able to do that, we kind of have to teach the students um, as they're learning to code to, you know, consider uh, security as they're going on. So it's definitely been an interesting experience for me. And I, I think that it's been eye opening just from the, you know, not being a, a student, but being on the other side now. So like I, I was actually talking to um, Mary Galloway the other day about like a PhD programs, because like, I feel like there's a big gap between, you know, what is needed to be able to get jobs and what we're actually teaching. Um, and I think we do a disservice to our students when we're not, you know, giving them what they need to enter the workforce. Okay. So like I said, we're, 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 we're going to get to that in, in, in a minute, but um, Rebecca, do you, now, did you go to college? Me? Or, oh, I know, I know you did. <laughs> I see you. I saw your LinkedIn profile. But yeah, uh, Rebecca, so you went to college. Yes, I was a history major. I was going to go into politics. Um, I wanted to be a lawyer and then become a senator and change the world. You know, one constituent at a time, and that could still happen. Uh, but I kind of went the uh, cyber route. So initially. After I got out of school, I uh, took on a seasonal job with the Rangers. Uh, I was just like, uh, at that time, my sister had just had her daughter, and I was her au pair. I like that because it sounds bougier than nanny. And um, I wanted just like a part-time job to kind of, you know, be able to talk to adults. And uh, so I saw that the Rangers had a seasonal position in the parking parking lot. I took that. And 2010, we made it to the World Series, and I was like, hey, I kind of like this. I wouldn't mind working for this organization. Um, and then I just looked for positions within the org that I could uh, possibly take. And so I thought it was going to be player relations or community relations because I was more in line with what I had been doing, uh, working with campaigns. Um, but for whatever reason, to their detriment, not detriment in that sense, but they didn't hire me in player relations. Um, no shade. I still get along with everybody in that department. <laughs> then a position in um, IT, and um, the VP asked to speak to me, and he was like, "We have this role open. It's a customer service role. Um, would you want it? Or are you interested?" And I was like, "I'm not very technical. Like, I mean, I rewound the tape from the VCR, like that type of stuff. I can help older people, but I don't know if I'm technical enough to like do this as a profession." And um, he said, well, you have all the soft skills, the things that we can't teach, and everything else, you're smart enough, you pick up. And I was like, all right, bet. Um, and then a coworker, who's my boss now, Bill, I asked him, I was like, hey, do you think I can do this? And he was like, yeah, yeah, you, you definitely can. And he gave me a couple podcasts. He was like, listen to this. Here's a book, read this. All right, you'll be fine. <laughs> and um, so I started working help desk. I did that for about a year. And then that's when I started learning more about cyber. And I was like, I really want to do this. And um, they ended up creating a position for me. And so now I'm a junior cybersecurity analyst. Nice. So uh, two things. One, I need to make sure I, I start getting InfoSec Unplug on the list of recommendations when people say, hey, listen to this podcast. Shameless plug. But anyway, um, shout out to... Um, that supervisor who made that statement about having the soft skills, because that's something that, that we talk about a lot that I think kind of gets overlooked. Um, you know, tech skills can be taught if you have the right, you know, the right mindset or the right skill set to, to learn it. Um, but those soft skills are hard to come by. Um, you know, Cybersecurity or tech in general um, is infamous for having a lot of introverted, nonverbal people, right? Like they like to code, they like to hack stuff, um, they like to just do what they do, but they like to kind of, for lack of a better term, be in the shadows. Um, and doing cybersecurity, you know, or or tech for a for a big company or an organization. Um, you know, you, you have to have those soft skills. You have to know how to talk to different people. You need to know how to read the room. And also is, you know, just a good thing to have because it also will help you um, elevate. I, I bet if you didn't have those soft skills, they probably wouldn't have even recommended it to you. So so that 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 just shows me that, you know, that that's a good manager that you got there. Hopefully, you know, 
he 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 or she or whoever it is sticks around and keeps that mindset. Now, um, with your educational backgrounds, do either of you have any certifications? I have um, a, a bunch of certifications that are in like the IT consulting space that have been useful for like my life prior to cyber. Um, but they are not cyber um, related certifications. I've got a uh, security plus um, and that's it as far as the, the cyber related ones so far. Right. Well, no, I, I just, what about you, Rebecca? Do you have any certifications? Um, a couple like, like vendor risk and things like that, kind of like said, tied to the things I do specifically, but not any of the major ones. Nope. Oh. No, no, fair, fair enough. Um, no, because I, I just wanted to hear your your opinions on, um, again, speaking about the whole thing about leading as we lead up to to, to bridging that educational gap. Um, what's your thoughts on the you know the debate? Because you know you, you you've seen it on Twitter. Some people say you don't necessarily need a certif you don't you don't you don't necessarily need certifications just have your degree and then you have people on the other side who say you don't need a degree just grab the certifications um i'm in that second batch i didn't go to college um i got a shitload of certifications and a lot of hands-on experience um but i do see the value in both but i wanted to get your opinion on the the certifications versus degrees debate um and any of you can start first so I, I think for me, like I, um, I think that you kind of need both um, to, in order to be able to get into the field, you know, much to my dismay. Um, I've got, you know, I could probably match you like cert for a degree because <laughs> I've got a, a, a lot of uh, degrees. Um, but, you know, a lot of the folks that I've talked to that, you know, I look to as mentors, they've told me that, you know, what they value most is, you know, experience. Um, Oh, and then experience and then maybe certifications and then maybe degrees. So, um, and I, I agree that degrees give you a lot of the, the theory and not so much of the practice, right? So like I could probably write all the policies and procedures and all of the papers and all of those things, right? But when it comes to, you know, a lot of the hands-on things, you know, that's not what's being taught in cybersecurity education. Um, but, you know, I think that in order to be able to get um, jobs and I've, I've looked for a lot of people because I'm trying to help a lot of people to, you know, get entry level jobs to get their foot in the door. And, you know, you generally I want to say maybe like 80 percent of the jobs require that you have like a, at least a bachelor's degree. Um, and then they want you to have, you know, some level of certifications beyond that. Right. So, you know, I think at the basis of that is the security plus, And then depending on like, you know, what your swim lane is, they want you to have, um, you know, some certifications as well. Right. But at the same time, like we can't be saying, hey, this is an entry level or this is a junior penetration tester job or this is a junior stock analyst job. And then we want you to have, you know, three to five years with a CISSP, right? <laughs> um, so it, it, it really doesn't make sense, you know, what it is that people are asking for. Um, you know, they want you to have a CISA, a CISM, like all of the the, the the certifications, right, for the position, even though, you know, they don't necessarily make sense depending on what your specialty or what your interest is. So, like, I mean, but I, I think that the industry gives you a little bit, uh, requires a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, what about you? So I don't think it's a, what I think the trick that most people end up falling in is that they think it's a one size fits all. Um, one of the most influential things that I heard a couple years ago is when looking for work, what you can narrow it to cybersecurity, but in general, a lot of times it's not just who you know or what you know, it's who you know, what you know, who knows you and what they know about you. Um, and I know that I can't okay. just because um, I've had one experience, it doesn't necessarily mean it's be the same experience for everyone else. But I know that there have been a lot of pivots in my life. They were like, you know, to achieve this, you have to check this box and this box. And then I will check that box and still not get what I thought I was supposed to attain by checking the box. But then yeah. by swerving and, you know, taking a detour, then it's like, oh, this is Hold on, I, you, you broke good. up a little bit there. You broke up a little bit there. Let's, I said you oh, broke God. up a little bit. Just, just, just rewind. You, you, uh, you were talking about the swerve when you, uh, when you're talking about the swerve. Swerving. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm. 
we lost her. All right, yeah, yeah but um, I, I could tell you that one of the things that you know I absolutely um, loved when I when I first kind of like interviewed or talked to Beck, um, she was brought on as the director of operations for Black Girls Hack. But you know, in the back of my mind, like I know that she's about to go to, to law school. I know that she's about to take over the world, and she's going to come back and be like our, our our legal our chief legal officer. So like I'm ready. I'm I'm waiting for her to uh, to take over the world. Um, you know, and I, and I, I tend to ask people like, you know, when they join the organization, when they're asking to volunteer, you know, like, what is it that they, they hope to achieve, right? Because like, I, I kind of want whatever it is that they're doing within the organization to, you know, help them get the experience that they need towards their world domination plan. Um, so, you know, when, when, when Beck joined on, you know, one of the things that I absolutely like loved about her is like her, you know, enthusiasm. She's absolutely, um, you know, just amazing as far as like just bringing the, uh, the, the, the energy and whatever it is that she does, you know, in any of our meetings or any of those things. So, um, but I, I think that, you know, you kind of, uh, to her point, you know, there is the other piece about that, about you needing, um, uh, you know, who, you know like a networking yeah. piece. Um, so like, you know, as for as much as, you know, I'm antisocial and I don't want to talk to people, I do realize that, you know, it's necessary for you to be able to succeed, um, especially in what has been historically a, a white dominated field, a white, older white male dominated field. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. And um, to, to her point about, you know, the one size, you know, the one size doesn't fit all model. Um, yeah, like I said, I... Later on in my career, I realized that maybe I should have networked more, right? Like I, I like I, I network now. I do the stuff with the show. Um, I speak at conferences, um, and f but for years I didn't. For years, it was just kind of like I was to myself, did my thing, and I was just like, you know, let let it let the chips fall how how how, how they may. Um, but one of the hardest things that I do remember was um, getting into trying to get my foot in the door. Um, I don't know if, if you're familiar with my story, like I basically took on a second job, um, because there was an opening at circuit city. I was their home theater tech and I had tried to get in my, get my foot in the door and into like an entry level it job. And I just kept getting turned away. So when this opportunity came up, I actually went to the, my manager and was like, do I, I'll do it for free. You know, I'll continue to do my work, but when I'm not doing installs, let me um let me work at the PC bench and he actually ended up giving me like an extra dollar or two or whatever and that's and that's how I ended up getting my foot in the door there and then I had and then having to do like phone support at a at a cable company um cuz yeah it's it's infamously difficult to kind of get your foot in the door especially if you don't have that degree or you don't have the you know the the it certifications that they're looking for even though they tell you stuff like you know if you're starting out in tech you know your a plus and network plus are the foundational ones to get or if you want to start out in security security plus is the foundational one to get so i do think um i i'm living proof that it's possible but i do think a combination if, if you have a combination of the two starting out that road might be a little bit easier, you know, not necessarily super easy, but it might be a little bit easier than trying to basically almost like volunteer your services to get your, to get the experience. Um, and then for those who are strictly degrees, I'm like, you have to get the certifications because those degrees don't mean anything if you don't have the, 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 the certifications and the hands-on skills to back up that degree. And certifications, you can you can do it with just certifications, but there's a I'm starting to notice there, there might be a ceiling, right? Like you won't you might not be able to get into certain senior leadership roles or senior management roles or definitely not any C level roles, or if you can, it's very few and very difficult to come by without having th that that degree. So um you know, do your research. I mean, if if you if you can make it work and you could do both, or that great, more power to you. But um, you know, you just got to figure out, like you said, you just got to figure out what works for you. And you know, yeah, not and not do the one size fits all model. Yeah, I I always tell people, you know, use you as my my source of inspiration when people are asking me, you know, can you make it to the top? Can you do big things without, you know, having to go and get a degree? And I say it's possible. You know, I try to use like these, you know, anecdotes 
anecdotal, you know, like, hey, look at um, <laughs> look at that and, you know, see what he's doing out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there are people who did it. Um, one of my professors at um, when I was at, in, in college, um, he was a professor for cybersecurity and he did not have a, a terminal degree. He did not have a PhD. I don't even think he had a master's degree, um, but he had become a professor at Johns Hopkins University because of the fact that he had all the certifications, you know, he had all the experience, like he had been doing it and putting, you know, the, the pedal to the metal pretty much like his entire career. So, you know, he was able to do something that you typically wouldn't be able to do, you know, without terminal degrees. So, you know, it, it is definitely a po possible to take over the world, regardless of which route that you, you take. It's just a matter of, I think, perseverance and, you know, just uh, just always grinding, always learning and always staying, you know, practicing your skills. You know, which no. is why I tell people all the time, like, you know, come out and hack with us. Like, I realize it's a, a Saturday night, but, you know, or a Friday night, come out and hack with us because, you know, you'll just continue to learn things, continue to grow your skills. And then, you know, one day you can, you know, take over the world. And then um, Beck's going to be your legal counsel. And, you know, you can just give me a, I, I don't even care what my title is. Like, just, just get me in the door. Yeah. PMP. And I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and, and I think one of the good things that happened, one of the good, the good things that came from 2020 um, for the tech field was the fact that things switched remote because you have a lot of people who have, you know, maybe social anxiety or whatever, and it's hard for them to, to deal with big crowds and going to meet up groups or going to conferences. And with, 20, with everything going remote, it allowed them to kind of be more comfortable in their own skin, not having to dress up in their own safe space and network with other people. Like, I don't think, had it not been for the fact that things went to went remote, I don't think I would have talked at any conferences last year, right? And I and I talked I talked at a, a few of them. I mean, I talked at conferences in other states and stuff like that, and I wouldn't have been able to do that um, if things were always in person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the one of the good things that came that came from it. And it also, again, it allowed me to to network and talk to other people, which brings me to now the the, the, the main focal point that I, we were we've been working up to. Um, and Tanisha, you, you, you touched on this earlier. Um, like I said in my talks with, you know, Professor Black Ops, Mary Galloway, uh, Professor Reggie, um, Dwayne Dunstan and a few other people. Um, we've been talking about how we can fix that, that, that divide, right? There's there, like, let's, let's be real. There's this, there's this gap in education when it comes to tech and cybersecurity. And, and then there's almost like this divide because, you know, you have people on the, the academia side who, look at people who want to do it from the cybersecurity side as, you know, you're not one of us, right? We're, we're professors, we're this, we're that. Um, you can't do what we do. And then on the cybersecurity side, you have teachers who are trying to teach cybersecurity who don't really know anything about cybersecurity and wind up being just notoriously wrong <laughs> in some of the things that they're teaching. And the cybersecurity folks are like, well, maybe, if, you know, can't do what we do. So how do we fix that? Like, like you know, Professor Black Ops basically said, like, we need an overhaul. And 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 I I I I tend to agree with him because I, you know, one of the things that one of the arguments that you hear with people with college is if I want to go to school for this, why do I need to learn all this other stuff? Right? Why do I need to know basket weaving if I want to be if, if I want to be a, a, a tech major or a computer science major or before before there was actually like a specialty in cybersecurity no one really wanted to go to college because it only tech thing was a computer science degree so how do we get how do we bridge that gap where we can get some of the cyber, more of the cybersecurity folks who want to teach into some of these schools not necessarily to take over and be the be the instructors, but maybe even be the assistant instructor or or help the, you know help the help the instructor instructor with the uh, curriculum. Um, if you ladies have any <laughs> ideas on that, uh, please feel free. 
So I, I think that we kind of need to remove some of the, the financial barriers to entry um, to, to cybersecurity, especially cybersecurity education. When we're talking about some of the certifications, um, you're talking in between hundreds to thousands of dollars. And if you want to do the training courses for one of those um, certifications, you're talking definitely probably thousands of dollars, right? Which immediately puts like kind of some barriers to entry in addition to some of the gatekeeping type things that I see, such as like you needing a sponsor for certain like certifications um yeah. you know or you needing three to five years plus the sponsor right but then yeah. all the sponsors who you know all the people who have the certifications are you know people who you know probably not even running in the same social circles that you probably don't even know you know because if you look in like a lot of the cybersecurity departments of companies you don't see a lot of black people you don't see um especially a lot of black women um, that are operating in the space you know it, it's becoming more mainstream we've got you know a few cisos at this point but I think part of that is that we need to get, you know, platforms that, you know, basically eliminate the the cost aspect and just to just become a matter of time, you know, allow people to get in, do the ethical hacking, allow them to, you know, be able to have access to things and, it, and, and remove the cost aspect from that. Um, so like we're trying to set up like a cloud lab so that people can actually get in and do, you know, ethical hacking and be able to do all of the things they need to do to get the hands on skills, you know, both from the red team and the blue team perspective. But again, you know, when you're dealing with cloud, you're talking about, you know, trying to run an environment for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. And then, you know, people just being able to access that and the cost tends to get, you know, a little bit out of control. So I think that in order to bridge the education gap, we need to get, you know, more, um, you know, kind of reduce some of the barriers to entry, especially the artificial ones, such as um, financials. Like we we see all of the time, um, you know, throughout history that Black people have been just had a disadvantage, you know, just through bias um, economically, right? So the fact that you know it's an economic cost is that's preventing us from being able to, to do these certifications or these trainings, you know, that's basically just perpetuating that system and it's not allowing us to be able to get in there. So like I'd like to see some of that. Um, you know, uh, reduced or eliminated. Absolutely. Um, and before I before I pass it to Rebecca, I want to add on that that we also need to get some of these um, on the on the tech school boot camp side of things. Uh, um, we also need to get them to stop doing things like holding certifications hostage, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, I'm not going to say the name of the organization. Um, I think they're getting enough smoke as it is anyway. But if you don't go through one of their courses, right, or you don't get sponsored, you can't sit for the exam, right? But you have Udemy, you have YouTube, you have Google, Twitter, you have all, Cybrary, you have all these resources that can teach you these things, but because it's not, because it's not them or because it's not, you know, it, it's taking money out of their pocket, they're holding that cert hostage. So, um, and, and unfortunately in the pen testing field, even though it doesn't really do jack for your hands-on experience, um, this is one of the certifications that a lot of companies still require um to say that you can that that you qualify as a junior pen tester and all my pen testers in the in in the in the chat um know know the certification and no nope, it's not sans sans is just expensive um but you know screw it i'm talking about the ceh <laughs> right um the ceh you know if you don't follow if, if you don't or if you're not already in the field or you don't go through one of their courses or their boot camps that that are ridiculously expensive for for that certification they they won't let you sit for the exam and now you end up you end up spending like four grand for something that's maybe a little bit more difficult than the security plus mm. that's not as hard as the pen test plus yeah i said it screw it what you gonna do take my certification away i don't care so <laughs> so um I, I think that's that's the other problem and, and, and some of that gatekeeping that you're talking about. It's it's on both it's on both sides. Um now, like I said, Rebecca, uh any ideas that you would like to share? Um, I think both of you should hit on a lot of good points, so I won't uh attempt to re say anything that you said in my words. Uh the only thing I would add to it is just um our educational system as a whole kind of needs a revamping and a reimagining because 
you think about the things I learned about Black history, I did not learn in school. It was things that I've learned on my own. Um, same thing with cybersecurity, and I think it also highlights the importance of organizations like Black Girls Hack and uh, Black and Cybersecurity and other people who are doing this, this work of, one, us creating a tribe that we can share knowledge, share resources, um, and also increase confidence. Because I think uh, the more uh, improved we are individually, the better we are collectively, the better we are as a community. Um, and that's a cyber community, the world at large, you know, however you want to apply that. Um, I think people who are hiring need to have more of an understanding of what they're hiring for so that they know what yes. to look for. Um, but that's and again, uh, shameless plug. This is why, this is why I am shouting out um, DFIR Diva and what she's doing with GetYourStartCareers.com because I think that is absolutely necessary. That it's almost like a middleman sitting there weeding out, you know, some of that bullshit um, from from employers where they're saying we want this entry level, but you have to have a master's degree, CISSP, and whatever. And oh yeah, by the way, pay starts at eighteen dollars an hour. That's just ridiculous. So I was just going to say that I think that, um, you know, to, to Beck's point um, that, you know, I, I'd like to see, you know, a lot of the the, the black people who are operating in cybersecurity to kind of like use our collective voices. You know, like I think that a lot of times we operate as individual silos as opposed to actually working together. And I think that if we used our collective verses that voices, if we actually work together, you know, that we can try to achieve you know, world domination, like we have, you know, networks, we have, um, you know, a lot of the things that you need, um, the, the resources, the the skills, the knowledge to be able to, to do these things. But, you know, I think that our community is one of those that still does a lot of those, like, you know, like, I don't want to say like crabs in a barrel, but like, you know, we try to act like when other people have um, information, in barrel. We, we can't share that information. And I think that I, the way that I try to operate is that, you know, I, I don't claim to know a whole lot. I don't claim to be like an elite hacker, but I, I do claim that, you know, whatever it is that I know, whatever information that I gain, the knowledge that I get, I'm going to teach the squad that information so that, you know, they can at least know what I know and then they can use that for their own, you know, world domination plans, you know, because like, I feel like information should be shared and we don't do enough of that. You know, there's, there's so many like disconnects and, and like, I really, you know, want us to be able to work together to achieve world, world domination. Like a, a, the way I see a lot of other people, a lot of groups of people who work together to, you know, achieve greatness. Right. And we don't see that um, a lot in, in our community, sadly. And I, I, I kind of want us to, you know, kind of be that change that we want to see. So, um, yes, Yes. And, <laughs> and, and yes, again. And we're going to get on we're, we're going to get on that later on in the show, because um, I want to get to, you know, the, some of the challenges that you ladies have faced or that you still face. You know, let's get into the meat and potatoes of how, you know, black girls hat came to be it being a 501c3. So and but we're going to get to that because that's a conversation that I definitely think we need to have it might be a little difficult for some people to have that conversation but it's definitely one that i think we need to have but before we do that um i do have to pay some bills so i'm going to bring up this week's sponsor once again is hail bites and their uh application security training range security sherpa and like i said when we get back i will talk to rebecca and tanisha about you know the challenges um, Black Girls Hack, you know, everything that they're doing over there. And then we're going to get into that conversation because it's definitely an important one to have. So y'all just sit tight. Um, I'm going to be talking to y'all in the chat while the commercial is going. But first, a word from our sponsors. And we're going to bring it up right now. What's up, everybody? It's DJX, DJX here from Alpha Cyber Security and InfoSec Unplugged. And I'm here today to talk to you about my friends over at Hailbytes. Hailbytes is a cybersecurity firm that provides on-demand security, infrastructure, and awareness training to companies and businesses of sizes. Their mission is to turn your employees into cybersecurity warriors and to protect your organizations from the most common and most damaging cyber attacks. They achieve this in many ways. Some of them are their online security training courses, phishing simulations, and their newest product, Security Sherpa. Security Sherpa is an online training environment that trains your team to build secure applications by giving them firsthand experience of real-world vulnerabilities. 
Not only will you learn about what makes them vulnerable, you'll also learn how to exploit them and how attack vectors work in the real world. The training modules range from beginner to seasoned professional with modules like Capture the Flag, Open Floor, and even tournaments where teams can compete against one another. Security Sherpa can be used to assess, improve, and report on application security skills across your team without the need for long courses. Best of all, it's powered by AWS, so you can start your training for one or several team members within minutes. If you think Security Sherpa is right for your team, just click the link below in the description and you can try it free for 14 days. Just click the link and you'll get started right away. Again, this is DJX from Alpha Cybersecurity and InfoSec Unplugged telling you to go check out Hailbytes and check out their new product, Security Sherpa. Take care. All right, we're back uh, once again. Thank you to our sponsor for this week, uh, Hailbytes. Please go check them out on Twitter uh, at Hailbytes. Same thing, LinkedIn and Instagram. And then also thank you, you know, for for letting me talk about their product, Security Sherpa. Um, again, I don't talk about a product unless I deal with it or know about it personally, because um, I'm not trying to put my name behind anything that is trash. But, um, you know, what they're doing, what they're doing with that training platform is amazing. Um, I, I think there's going to be a lot more stuff coming and it's definitely going to be something that is going to be one of the names in, in training. So please go check them out. Uh, once again, when you click that link, you get a free trial for 14 days. It's powered by AWS. So you can just get it up and up and running, you know, just like that. And yes, like I said, once again, it does, any proceeds from that does go back to helping the show. So. Ladies, now we, we like I said, we talked we talked about the education stuff. We talked about your your backgrounds and stuff, and and you touched on it shortly about you know some of the challenges that you 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 have faced in the past. Um, what challenges uh, do you still face, or that you're that you're starting that, that you see is still going to be an issue, you know, in the foreseeable future? Um, Rebecca, I'll let you go first. Um, a challenge that has been ongoing, but hoping that it won't be, because my mom always raised me not to speak negatively to the future. So I'm going to hope that it's, uh, it's been what it is now and it'll eventually get better. I feel like I have been my biggest stumbling block. Um, I can do a thing, and I will just offer it up your time, and you're like, hey, just give me the opportunity. This is something I can do. I believe that wholeheartedly. Lots of barrel. If you give me the opportunity to do something to learn it, I can get it done. But then even when I do it, I second guess myself for getting it done. I don't know. And um, I think that's been my biggest issue. I both have hella confidence and I can say anything to anybody at any time, but then low key crippling insecurity. <laughs> and it's been an interesting little uh, combo. Uh, but trying to, you know, deal with those things. Part of the shoddy connection is that I'm on a road uh, on a road trip on my way out of town, trying to work on that mental health, trying to make sure that, you know, it's a, I'm a well-balanced individual. And I think that's something people take for granted too in the field. It's like, okay, I just do my job. I'll do it the best that I can. I'll do that all over. But if you, the person, isn't sound as a foundation, then all the things that you put on top, I mean, it's more like good effect. That's something that I'm uh, working on, just making sure that, especially, you know, this is Mental Health Awareness Month, that I'm aware of myself and that um, I don't get in my own way. If someone's going to tell me no, let me let them tell me no. I don't need to tell my no, myself no first. Yep. <laughs> no, that's that that's that's absolutely true. And, and kudos to you for, for, you know, having that, that you know, that outlook to, to say, you know, yeah, you, that you definitely have to take your – self seriously and put yourself first and um and also deal with that that imposter syndrome because that's basically what it is um uh i don't know if you ladies saw the show last week with with, with brandon robinson but we, we 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 talked about that in depth about you know mental health and and taking care of yourself and finding ways to deal with you know certain stresses or traumas or whatever and one of the things that uh, you you see in the tech field a lot is a lot of people just burning, burning it on both ends and feeling like this is the only way they're going to get that recognition. This is the only way they're, they're going to get noticed or get the bag or whatever. And they run themselves into the ground. And then even though you may have achieved that bag or achieved that goal or achieved that certification, 
what good is it um if now you're stuck you know basically almost like rehabbing or or dealing with the 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 trauma you put your your body mentally and physically through to achieve this goal and i'm i'm living proof of that right i you know because i felt like i needed to make up for the fact that i didn't have a degree because i was the unicorn in in the group and i felt like i needed to make sure i stood out because you know I was one of one in my t- on my team. And on top of it, I wasn't college educated. So I had two strikes against me. So I felt like I just needed to go and go and go. And and on one hand, it's a good thing, right? Because you have that motivation, you have that momentum going, you don't want to let that stop. But um, sometimes you have you have to get in your own way, right? I, I know you saying don't let yourself get in your own way neg- negatively, but it's good to get in your way in your own way positively right so it's like okay if if you know that you're if you know yourself you you're you know your body more than anyone else and you know your mind better than anyone else so you can feel some of the red flags or warning signs um don't ignore them so you know you you go on away on a road trip to 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 refresh that's that's important that that's vital so yes Kudos to you and, and enjoy your time off. And, and and I appreciate the fact that you're you're even on the show as you're taking this trip. So, um, you know, I, I definitely appreciate that. So, uh, Tanisha, what about you? What are some of the challenges that that you face uh, or that you still face to this day? Um, I, I'd say that, like, personally, um, I, I have some of the imposter syndrome that I think Beck was speaking about, you know, just as far as like feeling like, you know, I don't know enough um, and I, 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 I'm not good enough. And, you know, like that I don't deserve to, for, you know, people to, to know my name. Um, you know, so like some of that, I think um, is something that, that, that I have to, 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 to deal with, um, you know, at the same time, like, you know, I have a lot of experience. I have a lot of um, education and I don't think that I give enough credit. So just giving, you know, yourself like a little, a little grace, um, I think is important. Um, and then I think the other thing um, that I think that organizationally we face um, is the fact that we've got so many people who are trying to um, get into cybersecurity. Um, I don't think that we have enough like pipelines to be able to get um, people into the field. You know, I, I don't think that we have um, these th- these situations that are set up so that people can actually get be able to get jobs. Um, you know, they say that there's 500,000 um, cybersecurity jobs that are um, available in North America um, and that there is 0% unemployment in cybersecurity because there's so many jobs available, right? But just, you know, me interfacing with Black Girls Hack, like I see all of the people who I know are still trying to get internships that are still trying to get jobs, right? So, you know, those people, I think, need you know, both the opportunity to be able to get their foot in the door. So, you know, maybe that's networking, but then at the same time, like we need mentors, you know, we need people who can try to provide, um, you know, their experience because I feel like a lot of um, what people have to go through is just like, um, you know, repetitious trauma. You know, it's like, you don't have to go through the same mistakes that I made. Like, it's my goal to teach you all of the mistakes that I made so that, you know, you don't have to do those same things, right? So I I want people, people to kind of like be able to learn. Um, And part of that is that we as cybersecurity practitioners have to say, you know, hey, this is how I fell on my face. This is how I failed. This is where, you know, that one time that I effed up, right? So that people can can know, you know, and for me, I always tell people like that the, I think the biggest place that I effed up in in over the course of my, um, you know, career has been, you know, not knowing my worth, not knowing my value, um, not asking for, um, the amount of money or not, or knowing how much money it was that I was supposed to ask, especially uh, initially in my career um, mm-hmm. and, and not having, you know, knowing that value. And I think that by people mentoring, you can be able to ask those questions like, you know, uh, Gavin, what, what should I be making when I'm at your level? You know, what should I be looking for as a penetration tester? What should that, um, you know, those benefits look like? What should that time off look like? What, how much pay should I be looking for? You know, like, do I really need six years or seven years in order to ask for, you know, 200,000 or whatever, you know, that that number looks like, you know, when you get to your level, you know what I'm saying? So like if, if people can, who are coming behind you kind of like learn from your mistakes and learn from my mistakes and, and, and Bex, you know, then 
they can kind of not avoid, not do those same mistakes themselves and, yeah. you know, be able to avoid that, you know, because there's no reason why, you know, people, we have to keep repeating these, I, I call them generational like curses. We don't have to keep doing this, you know, no, I, we can, I, I, let's learn from it. No, I, I agree 100%. Um, and that's kind of the, one of the things that led me to starting the blog and starting this channel. Um, because I remember being that junior pen tester or that that new person in the field who had to, who had similar questions um, and either didn't know how to ask, who to ask, and the people that I did ask didn't respond to me. And then as I got older and, and, and more experienced, um, I started running into the same problems where now people were asking me and I just didn't have the time. So now I start, so what I, I came up with coming up with the blog site and the articles so basically it's evergreen content where okay this is these are some of the things that you need to know no matter where you are in your career you're always going to need to know how to set up a virtual you know a, a vm or or you know a, a docker or docker instance or uh you know what a vpn is or how you why you should secure yourself online or why you should use secure passwords you know, I, I created all these things because not only did I want people who were new into new into the tech field to 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 know this stuff, I also want people who aren't who aren't super familiar with tech outside of what it can do for them. Um, I wanted to show them the dangers and the pitfalls of it. And Tanisha, you bring up another valid point about um, teaching through failure, right? Too many times we see all the wins, you know. I got this certification. I got this job. I got this raise. I got this bonus. I I got this win. Win, 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 right? And not enough do you hear about, well, I fucked up and here's how. Um and one of the articles that I wrote was about me failing my, the my first my first try at the OSCP at how I failed it. And not only did I go into detail about how I failed it, obviously, without breaking any NDA rules, but, you know, I went into details about how I failed it. But then I also talked about that was that was the first time I actually openly spoke about, you know, the struggles with anxiety and imposter syndrome um, and how you how I set these unrealistic expectations um, for myself. And and then back to what we were talking about earlier with Beck. Um, ignoring those those warning signs that my body was giving me and taking this exam knowing mentally and physically i'm not there for like the last three four months for that exam i was like on like three hours of sleep a night four hours of sleep at night i'm working full time trying to still make sure i'm there for the kids make sure i spend at least four hours in the lab then i go to bed and i do it all over again and then on the weekends it's like from the moment i wake up to two three in the morning i'm in, i'm in front of the computer and that was the wrong way to go about it. And, you know, but you see online, this is all we do. We hack all day. We do this. We do that. Some people take it to an extreme and, you know, they pop Adderall or whatever. And it was just like, no, that's wrong. So I'm going to write about how it's wrong. I'm going to write about how I messed up, but I'm also going to write my plan for recovery. And to this day, it actually ended up being one of the most, one of my more popular blog articles. because, And I think it was just because of the fact that I wasn't afraid to, to talk about it because you don't hear that. You don't you don't hear that normally. So we definitely have to normalize the failures as well as the successes. Hell, I think it's even more impactful if you talk about the failures and then that led to the successes, because now people are following that journey right along with you. So but that's that's my that's that's my spiel. But um, with with all of that, you know, you know, with, with those challenges uh, from from Beck with the imposter syndrome and stuff and 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 Tanisha talking about, you know, the experiences of falling on her face and 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 learning from that and trying to help other people, um, you know, you start Black Girls Hack. And um, like I said, I, 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 I told you I, I've poked I've poked my head in, a, on a, in on a couple of the Zoom sessions. And I think what <clears throat> what you ladies are doing there is amazing because it's it's a it's almost it's a it's a training study group but it's also like a support group like like going back to the point you said earlier about the 
that crabs in a barrel and more people need to help, you know, come together. I think what you're doing over there is leading by example because you have, you know, you have your you have your group, you have your squad as you like to call them and like, you know, it's just all about building the skills, building the hands-on skills, building the stuff that they need to know, but you also build each other up. So 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 talk about that. Yeah, so I mean, I think that the one of the things that I, I like most about the the Black Girls Hack Squad is the fact that it's you know a support system. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people when they hear about hacking, um, they you know are like, I'm I'm I don't know enough in order to to hop in. I don't know enough about capture the flag. I've never done one before. I don't know anything about hacking. I don't know, you know, what to even where to be even begin for you know if I wanted to jump into try hack me or hack the box or any of those things, right? And they they say that you know there's basically they don't have whatever the minimum prerequisites that they put in their mind um, to be able to get in there. So like you know a lot of our stuff we try to you know go through the process of explaining um, ethical hacking to them so that they know that it's okay to jump in. You know I tell people all the time people try to act like you know um, you know Tanisha knows so much and I'll, I'll be the first person to say you know I did my first capture the flag um, last year in 2020. You know, that was one of the first times that I had done, you know, like, <clears throat> excuse me, like an in-map scans or any of those things. You know, I am not that far removed from a lot of the place where the squad is um, right now. Um, but I'm, the difference is, I think that as I learn things, I'm trying to teach them so that, you know, they can, you know, incrementally increase their skills. Um, so I appreciate the fact that, you know, people can feel comfortable for, um, you know, be up to be able to ask questions, to be able to, you know, jump in and get the experience because, you know, you're not going to become a pro overnight. You know, you're not going to be an elite hacker if you're always too afraid, if you're always talking yourself down into getting into. So, like, that's why I try to, like, you know, as much as possible, try to make people feel comfortable where they can come in um, regardless of who they are. You know, it's called Black Girls Hack, but you don't have to be a Black girl to, you know, do it. Anybody's welcome to come out and hack with this. Um, and I want them to feel comfortable to be able to do that and, and, and you know, be able to take over the world, you know, to learn what it, what it is that they need to do. You know, I can only teach the things that I know, but, you know, as we've grown as an organization, we get more people who can teach things that they know um, so that we can have well-rounded cybersecurity professionals, right? As opposed to just, you know, ethical hackers um, or penetration testers. Um, but I think that's, that's what Black Girls Hack, for me, the benefit is. Okay. You ever have crack a joke and someone else gets it and they laugh so strong and you just make it strong. you start singing a song and the other person finishes it and they're like i know that you know i feel like that's the benefit of having a tribe at work at home in life you have to be this you have to be that when you're with your tribe you can just be and um that's kind of what black house hack has been it's like-minded individuals who are we're all trying to better ourselves and so we can hype we can commiserate it's it's comfort also challenging it's a you know an iron sharp sharpens iron situation so it's bliss <laughs> <laughs> no the, um and, and i think that's 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 absolutely crucial um i think khalil is still in the chat um it, it's very similar to what she's doing with her tech sec chicks um having that like you said that 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 tribe that squad um it's it's important um again speaking from someone who's gone it you know lone wolf style for so long i as much as i as i have accomplished i often wonder how much more would I have been able to had I had a bunch of like-minded people, you know what I'm saying? Right along with me. Cause it's one thing is one thing to kind of have that self-motivation that always bet on yourself and do the work mentality that I always like scream from the mountaintops. But um, I, I, I look at stuff now and I like, I, like I see what, what, what you, what you ladies are doing with black girls hack, what Khalil is doing with tech sec chicks, um what uh my my previous guest uh, last week rachel toback what she's doing with wisp um share the mic in cyber um you know uh and, and so many uh 
Women's Mary Galloway, Mary, Mary Galloway with the Cyber Jutsu tribe. Um, and uh, Philip Wiley with Pwn School, uh, Ty Wilson with with the with the DC Politics. Cyber Professionals, the you know yeah. the largest freaking meetup group, and I and I'm like, I often wonder how much more I would have been able to accomplish if I had that, you know that that camaraderie, um, which is which led me again to kind of start the whole you know start the the pack the wolf pack the chat. You know, again, it's it's more than just it's more than just people here in a in a chat log every Thursday. You know, I talk to a lot of them offline. I help a lot of people as many as many people as I can. You know, with, with, even in between my schedule and stuff like that. Um, and I just think it's just awesome that 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 you know you you all are doing this. So, but I think the other thing that comes along with it is. Um, there's no rock star vibe, right? Like there's there's no one person, like like Tanisha said, there's no one person who's like, I know everything. And I think the appeal to a lot of these groups is that it's almost like we're building, we're we're building together and we're building each other, right? So you're seeing the progress in each other. Whereas in back to what we were talking about with the school setting, you have this professor or this teacher who knows everything and they're teaching it and you have to learn it for a grade but if you if you see someone going through the exercise or the ctf or to try hack me like like i've done or jb has done um or like like you have done um you get to see the real you get to see where they you can see where this where, where the person might stumble where they where they struggle and and sometimes that's terrifying Right. Because um, I don't know if you if you ladies have ever done presentations, especially in the tech field, but it's like the curse of the live presentation or the, or, 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 or praying to the demo gods before a, a live. Demo. <laughs> um, and that, that, you know, that anxiety can be crippling sometimes. Like I, I did a try hack me one and it was something that I that I knew. I, I want to say it was like basic networking, like OSI models, like shit that I've learned 10, 12 years ago. And I froze live stream <laughs> and a part of me, like I was freaking the hell out, but then it was just like, all right, you know what? Cool. This, this, but this, this, this is, this is real. This comes with it. So I, I think that what, what you ladies are doing with that is, is important. And I think there needs to be more of that. Um, but one of the things that um, I see a lot of people struggle with and even in those groups uh, or leading those groups or leading those talks is showing and pushing that the, the, the necessity of having a passion for learning, right? Because if you don't, if, if you're not interested in learning, if you're not interested in reading and you claim you want to be in cybersecurity, if you don't want to learn new things and you don't want to read on a weekly basis and have a ton of freaking books that you're just looking at, like I have over here. Um, you're you're in the wrong field. So um, I say it all the time. People don't want to hear it from me. So you ladies, please talk about you know the importance of having that that passion for learning or that that motivation to want to learn. Yeah, I think that you know a lot of people when they're looking at you know cybersecurity, especially from the outside, you know you'll see the success stories like you were saying. You'll say hear people saying, "Oh my gosh, you know like I got all these jobs and they're six figures and I'm doing all this stuff." But what they don't see is that you know there is definitely a grind. You know, like almost every day that that God sends, I am on my you know computer. Um, you know at some point doing a try hack me or doing a hack the box so I can try to work on my skills just so that I can make sure that I'm making time for Tanisha, the hacker, you know, not just Tanisha, the executive director for black girls hack, you know? So like, I think that it's important that, you know, like with muscles, like if you're going to work out that you, you know, continue to train those muscles, you continue to condition them, you continue to use them. Right. Because, you know, like 
um, anything else, you know, our, our brain is a muscle and it, it, it atrophies if you don't use it. You know, if you're not using your skills, you know, you're going to forget. You know, it's not like riding a bike where you, you'll just hop back in. You got to kind of practice every day, not to mention the fact that things change every day. Threats change every day. You know, the exploits change every day. Um, so it's important that you kind of like try to stay on top of that, especially if you're going to be in charge of um, securing um, organizations, right? So you've kind of got to practice. It's not one of those things where, you know, you can learn everything you need to learn and then you're good and you could just forget about it, you know? Like you kind of have to keep grinding. Like I, yeah. I feel like if, if anything, it's one of those grindy things, you know? Yeah, no, I, I said something in a group the other day, a group chat the other day where I, I kind of was like, you know what? Let's talk less about the bag and talk more about the work, right? Because everybody talks about the bag, but no one talks about how they got the bag. No one talks about the real deal that comes behind the bag. No one talks about how to keep the bag because it's one thing. Oh, yeah, I got, great. I got this job that pays me 175K or I got this job that pays me 200K. But so many people are so hell bent on rushing to get the bag that you didn't stop to ask yourself, am I qualified or did I just bullshit my way to this payday? Because if you bullshitted your way to the payday, you're going to get exposed real quick. And the only bag you're going to get is the one in the unemployment check until <laughs> you kind of go back and play your position. And and I think, again, this, this is one of the downfalls to to tech Twitter, because again, it's all about the success stories, but no one's talking about, okay, yeah, I got, I got the bag because, or very few are talking about, I got the bag because like you said, I'm spending, I'm spending my free time on doing this and trying to make time for myself to, to elevate and, 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 and push myself further. So, um, yeah, let's talk less about the bag and talk more about the work, because if you talk more about the work, and you can show the work and, and you can prove that you can do the work, the bag will come. So that's just, again, that's, that's my little tidbit. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Rebecca, we'll talk about, you know, again, I know you talked about it earlier, but, you know, talk, talk about your, you know, your experience with, with, with the group and, and, and having that passion for learning. So, not just combination of things, just like what Tanisha says, uh, trying to get on track, being towards things, and all the skills. It's also listening to pilot books and hearing different schools of life because you can't just stay in your lane too. Because it, um, the bad actors, whatever, they are finding new ways to attack you. So if you limit the Talk way that uh, you prepare, then you end up doing yourself a disservice. Um, and then as far as like with the bag being heavy, it's like if I see The Rock pick up 100 pounds, something, I don't think anything of it because he looks like he put in the work and pick it up. So if I barely ever going into the gym, like it's a stranger, to try to pick up the same thing, I will struggle <laughs> because I did not prepare. <laughs> and I think sometimes people conflate things being easy by looking easy. Yeah. It's not that it's easy if you just make it look that way because of all the work that we're doing. Um, and what you spoke about earlier about, um, you know, both of you and Tanisha about, about failure being a teacher. Honestly, that's cybersecurity, right? Like we, everybody always says this happens. Uh, it's not if, it's when. That's it. Um, yeah. And you need to be resilient. It's learning from failure, being able to pivot and adjust and adapt is one of the most crucial skills that you can have in this field. Uh, so even working on that, like being upset because uh, I was in traffic. Well, okay, well, if I go to the right out of Mini Cooper, I can cut this person off, I can speed up. So instead of spending the time, like you, you, even the skills, you know, that I work on, uh, finding different ways to adapt and continue, it has been uh, pretty beneficial to me. Yeah, I think I think when it comes to cybersecurity, especially on the offensive side, everything is a teachable moment from going back to what we talked about from soft skills um, to uh, analyzing, reading the room, um, critical thinking, because all this all of it helps. For example, having really good soft skills. Um, I had Rachel Toback on last week. She's probably one of the best social engineers I've I've ever 
known or read about. Um, but yeah, having those soft skills, it's like being a people person makes you a better, can, can help because you can do those things. And she talked about how she got her social engineering skills from being able to call something that I think we've all done in the past from calling, um, calling, you know, not a bill collector, but, but calling a utility company and talking down your bill, trying to get a disc, trying to talk your way into a discount. That's that, that to me, I was like, Oh shit, we've all done that. That's something that no matter who you are, what background you come from, you want to save money. And she talked about how she talked, she would talk down her cell phone bill every month. She talked down her light bill. She talked down different bills every month. And her husband was like, you can do this. And, and now she's, you know, she, she, she does that for her own company. So I think, you know, yeah, looking at everything, everything, you have to have a passion for learning and everything is a teachable moment. So yeah, absolutely. But in that learning, and in your journey to do some of the stuff that you've done with the with the with the CTFs and the tri hackneys and all of that, um, what are some fun things that you ladies have learned in doing some of those CTFs from from a hacking standpoint? Um, I, I say for me, like the, the the best feeling in the world was like the first time that like I think it was maybe over Christmas or no maybe it was the Thanksgiving last year. And it was the first time that I had like rooted a box and I was so freaking excited. I posted it on the Instagram and all of the, the social medias because, you know, for me, you know, it was I had faced a problem. I was able to solve it, you know, without having to, you know, do a whole bunch of foolishness or ask other people. I was able to kind of figure it out myself. And so for me, you know, like I literally approach all of the things that I do like as a problem, you know, like that you have to just figure out a way to solve. You know, like I've I've worked on trying to give myself a lot of different skills and a lot of different like uh, tool bags to to kind of like be able to draw back on. But but you know, just being able to use different approaches for different problems, I think is the 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 best part for me, and I think that's why um, I I like it. You know, I I also was telling someone, you know, I had for a long time done quality assurance. Um, you know, and the thing I liked about that was basically the antagonistic part about it. Like, you know, you have these software developers and they're out here developing code. And like my express purpose in life is to tell you all of the ways that you effed up and your code doesn't work, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so like, I kind of approach like the, the blue team much in the same way, like, you know, go ahead, do your best. And, and one day I'll get to the point where, you know, it doesn't matter like who I'm faced with, you know, I'll be able to, to break in and do what I need to do. Um, and you know, that, that's what, what kind of keeps me going. And, you know, I kind of approach it from that perspective, like it's a challenge. There's a lot of different ways to, you know, kind of fit the, the, the peg into the hole. You know, I just have to figure out which one's going to work for me. Right. Beck, what about you? I love leveraging things that you don't, or at least the, the average person wouldn't think applies to cybersecurity. Um, like what you were talking about earlier, being able to call the uh, phone company and talk your bill down to their office. That's finesse. People have been finessing things for like ever. I'm from the Bronx. I feel like finesse is like a second language. I'm single. And I absolutely love it. Um, first time I got to go to DEF CON and uh, I went to the hacking village. And that was just a cool experience, just being around it, you know, and then not being lost. Like, because a year prior, I went, cyber was completely foreign to me. It was like, I wouldn't even say it'd be like speaking Klingon because I'm probably more fluent in that. But uh, to then be in that environment and hear people talking about um, specialties and what have you and not being lost, that's been the greatest thing. It's like, I'm actually pertaining things. I'm actually learning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so the more that I understand, the more affirmed and excited I am because it's just further confirmation that I'm retaining. Uh, and advancing. Yep. No, ab absolutely. Um, and and I think it just only it just only builds from there. Um, the more you learn about it, and the more you can apply it to to what you're doing every day. Um, yeah, you start to have other conversations with people who maybe you felt like you didn't think you'd ever be in a room with them or be on a call with them. And you say something or they say something, you're like, I got I understood that reference. Right. <laughs> um, 
like I, I I've caught myself doing that a, a, a few times where like I'm in I'm in rooms with people where I'm like, holy shit, that's Marcus J. Carey or Philip Wiley or whatever. Um, and and then we're talking and it's like, oh, I I totally understand what they're talking about. And I and and I think back to you know maybe two three years ago where I may have saw something that they did similar or a talk that they did and I'm like this is all foreign to me. Like to me, it reminded me and I'm showing my age, but it reminded me of uh, Charlie Brown. Whenever the, whenever you heard the adults talking to the Charlie Brown, like, wah, 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 wah. like for years, certain, for certain terminology or certain phrases, like that's what it sounds like. I'd be in a meeting and I go, <laughs> and in my head, I'm going, Google that, Google that, Google that, write that down, Google that. And, and I'm going, Oh, absolutely. All right. <laughs> and then I and then I started getting to a point where it's like, oh, OK, I, I, I get what you, I, I get what you're saying. And now it's the same thing with, uh, with the cloud and AWS. Like a lot of that stuff was foreign to me. And now as I started to 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 to, to, to do the deep dive into it, now I'm like now we're in meetings and they're talking about stuff and I'm going, ah, oh, yeah, I know what that is. Yep. S3 buckets. Yep. Got you. Yep. And so um, I, I was actually yeah. telling somebody the other day. Um, I was teaching the Security Plus class, and um, you know, I, I was telling them that when I took the Security Plus, there was no cloud section on there. Um, you know, I thought that I had taken the when it was like the five version, but I had actually taken like the three version. Um, wow. And it was just like, you know, that's been a, a long time ago since I, I, I've taken it. And somebody yesterday was just asking me about, um, you know, if I, if I knew the best way to do something on a Mac, and I was telling them the last time I touched a Mac was you know, probably 20 years ago, and it was like a bubble Mac, you know, where they didn't have like any of the, like the CPUs, they just had like, you know, the big monitor that you could basically hug in a keyboard. And that was it. I was like, that's the last time I touched the Mac. So I was like, I don't got nothing for you for the Macs. So I was like, so I'm sorry, but, <laughs> yeah. but fortunately, I have people who, you know, who do know how to use Mac. So, you know, they can, you know, kind of translate the conversation, but you know what you know. Man, I just, I just got a Mac for the first time like i had an iphone when i would work for this one company and it was literally this my work phone so that's all i used it for was for work purposes i didn't care about none of it i just got a mac the other day and i'm like uh sure thanks and then like i basically like took a weekend and was like googled everything mac and then i was like okay so now how can i do that and now it's just literally the same thing i did with the work phone it's all for work purposes work emails anything that's business related goes on the Mac and I do everything from here. So it's like, you don't need to know a Mac to, to, to my point is you don't need to know a Mac to get into it. Um, and then I think to your point, Tanisha, I think that when I first took security plus penetration testing, wasn't even a big top, wasn't a big part of it. It was like, they, it was like a couple sentences. So the first time I took it and then the second time I took it, it was more Wi. there was more Wi-Fi than it was on the first time. I think I took the three and then I took the five. So, yeah. Okay, so let's see here. Um, now, we touched on this earlier, and I said we were going to come back to it. So, and Rebecca's signal is it, it looks looks pretty strong from what I'm seeing. So, <laughs> we, we we're going to get into this right now. So, um, lately, I've been asking the question to a lot of my guests about how we can get more um, diversity in cybersecurity, right? More women, more people of color. And then that turned into more people from this is, you know, from from poorer communities. Because I think they bring they bring a bunch of experience to this field that can't be taught, you know, from people who kind of don't know what it's like to be without let's 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 call it like that and then um i started saying well maybe i'm asking i'm still asking the wrong question right because i'm asking people who are already in the industry i'm asking people you know whatever but with having you on and kalila and 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 several other guests um I think the responsibility falls on us more than anybody, 
right? Yes, I'm not saying that there aren't going to be gatekeepers. I'm not going to say I'm not saying that there aren't going to be people who are going to be try to, who are going to be roadblocks in the way. But I think that um, which which started the whole campaign about bridging this educational gap. Um, one of the thing one of the other things I've been saying all 2021 is that it can be done and it can be us, but most of all, it has to be us. And what I mean by that is, like, I, I can't speak to to your backgrounds, but I didn't come up with family who made six figures and worked in tech or, you know, even had um, accessibility to a lot of tech. Um, but representation matters. So that's why I said it can be done and it can't be us, because we have to show that it can be done and it's done from people that kind of look like the same people we're trying to reach out to from the same backgrounds. Um, and you taught and, and you touched on it earlier about the, you know, coming together and breaking that crabs in the barrel mentality. I think that's super important because um, there's so many people out here of all backgrounds, all races, all nationalities that have the same common goal, right? To bring more people into the field, bring more people into, bring more people from different backgrounds into the field. Because um, as uh, Camille Stewart wrote, like lack of diversity is a security risk, is, is a vulnerability in itself. Um, and you're, and, and you see a lot of that, especially as we move into things like AI and facial recognition, if we don't have people there who can represent us, shit's not going to work for us. Mm -hmm. So the response, I feel like, a, yes, there needs to be people on the other end and we need to have allies and we need to have, we need to break down some of these walls and these, and knock down some of these gatekeepers. But I do feel like the, the bulk of the work falls on us to bring people in and to get rid of that crabs in the barrel mentality where, you know, I'm not afraid to say, I don't know that answer, but go check out this person or, Oh, you want to know something about IPV six, go talk to Ty Wilson or, Oh, you really want to get into networking? Um, Go talk to go talk to Jay Bizzle, Cyber Insider. Go talk to uh, go talk to CCIE by Thirty, dear Jay Footman. You want to talk about forensics? Go talk to DFIR Diva. You know we gotta we gotta be okay with not being that person or that dude or that girl or whatever it is you want to call it. But the question again is 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 how how how, how do we do that? And how do we get all on the same page? Because not for nothing, there are bigger things going on, on on in the world that we can't get on the same page for, that we need to get on the same page for. So how the hell are we going to do that in tech and cybersecurity? Rebecca, I'm going to let you go first with that with that question. That was a lot. <laughs> I feel like um, this, what we're doing right now, uh, Black Girls Tech, uh, if I diva, have all the other people you mentioned, tech, tech, chicks, that's indicative that we're on the right path. Uh, we're not there yet. It's definitely a journey. Um, one quote I heard, I think it was Camille Stewart actually who posted it about wanting to be a lift as we rise, uh, have that kind of mentality. And I think a lot of times people don't want to admit, and I don't, it's, I don't think it's limited to our community, but it's, we're not exempt from it. They don't want to admit that they don't know something because it's a position of vulnerability. Because if you don't know, then at least society is to say you don't know, then that means that you're a standard, you're not smart. Or whatever. I never, I take pride in I know where to find it. Um, and thankfully, I think we have surrounded ourselves and educated ourselves. So we can be a resource to others, and we've connected to each other so that where we be. Uh, lacking someone else is strong. Um, we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I think we are creating opportunities for ourselves and for others. It's, so it's just a matter of continued exposure so that people know it's like, uh, I wasn't very big on her in general, uh, but when I eventually started to 
Instagram and I saw a black tech Twitter, it's like, oh my, there's all these people who are doing the same things, are interested in the same things, and then that led to another thing, and that led to another thing. And so it's just a matter of once you're exposed to it and you know what's out there, um, they would say you grow to what you know to, uh, you grow to what you know. And so I feel like it, the best thing that we can do is continue to be the standard bearer, to be a light, to shine, to let whoever, and that might get a little preachy, whoever's up and around in the darkness of whatever, if it's professional, if it's personally or whatever, our, my responsibility, I won't put this out, is to be the absolute best that I can be and I'm in so that then they are and can do the same. Um, and I think it's the job isn't done for me to get uh, Cardi B said, <laughs> if I eat, we all, you know, and um, I think as long as we all continue to have that mentality, then everybody gets fed. Fair enough. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and I, I think that, you know, when we're talking about um, you know, uh, using your 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 um, position. You know, using your brand, using your spotlight, right? Um, one of the best ways I've seen that. Um, you mentioned Camille earlier. Um, is the share the mic in cyber? I think that's a great way to allow. Um, you know, you for allow Black practitioners to be able to. You know, get um, the spotlight to be able to get more visibility, right? So if our allies are using their platforms, especially uh, you know ones that are very high visibility, then that's going to you know share the light on other people, you know, so that they can just know that there are you know black people who are operating in the space that they can um, try to to get into. I think the other thing is 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 exposure. So um, you know, I'm from Northeast DC. You know, I tell people all the time that you know we did not have you know, the appropriate level of math classes for, for what it was that I was trying to do, you know, so I had to go outside of the box to try to get to some of those math classes, you know, there wasn't like, you know, computer science courses at the, this point, but, you know, again, I think I did my, my uh, college applications on a typewriter. Um, so, but I think that if we do like some K through 12 exposure, you know, for cybersecurity so that they can see, you know, what it is that's out there, then that gives them exposure to let them know that there are other careers out there for little black boys and girls that don't involve a ball of some sort, you know, like you don't have to just be a, um, you know, a sports player or you don't have to be an entertainer or an actor, not that there's anything wrong with any of those things, but there are people who are out here, there are black hackers out here. There are people who, and not black hat hackers, but there are African American hackers out here who, you know, you can look up to. Um, you mentioned uh, Marcus J. Carey the other day, like, that is one of the people I looked up to. I look up to, you know, the Mary Ca uh, Galloway to, to this day, you know, like I see the people who are operating in the space. And I think that, you know, when we're saying representation matters, you know, being able to see people who are operating in the space who are doing big things that can allow you to see that there are, you know, black goals out here that are not, um, you know, just doing the traditional things that people think that, you know, black people are supposed to do, you know, like, Computers are, don't have to be, you don't have to be great at math. You don't have to be great at, you know, computer science. There is a little something for everybody, you know, within computer science. You know, we talked about the OSINT earlier. You know, maybe they don't, those people don't ever touch an in-map scan. Um, but I think that we need to get more exposure. We need people to see, you know, what's out there. They need to see a black man who is out here doing the darn thing. You know, they need to see black women who are out here doing the thing. So, um you get more people by showing them that what's what the op options are, giving them the you know the hands-on skills that they don't necessarily have the ability to get due to financial concerns, and you know as much as possible try to bridge the gap so that they can be able to join the workforce and be able to su succeed. Because like Beck said, if you give them the opportunity, they will show up and show out. You know, like they just need the chance, and I think that that's what we're trying to do is to try to give them the chance to be able to to do that. Yeah, and I I think all I mean. All of that is spot on. And I think the other thing is we need to show them that, you know, it it can be also relatively inexpensive to start. Um, uh, shout out to Luis Ortiz. He just put it in the chat real quick. Um, and he said, is a Raspberry Pi 4 good to start for mobile compact ethical hacking? And my answer is yes. And um, when I had the Blacks and Cybersecurity Group on, um, shout out to Nico Sox. Um, he talked about that. He talked about how, you know, teaching them how to do ethical hacking or, or, or basic 
uh, programming or something like that on a Raspberry Pi is is cheap or, you know, inexpensive. And it also for some of these poor communities, it's not something that someone's going to go look to steal, you know, because usually if you're in a poor community, you have to you 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 have a worry about you know is someone going to steal the laptop or the computer and how am I going to afford getting another one? You can get a Raspberry Pi for like 40, 50 bucks, you know. And not only are you learning how to put it together, now you're learning how to put an operating system on there. Um, you know, it's a Linux operating system, but whatever. And you're and you can make you can do so many things with it. So yeah, Lewis, your timing with that question was 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 perfect because again, that that's an inexpensive route. Uh, another reason why I'm always you know screaming from to anyone who will hear me is you know Google, YouTube, and Udemy, right? Sci- or Cybrary because. These are all platforms that you can find 90% of the answers you need or resources you need and you're spending next to no money, right? If you go on Udemy when they're having a sale, you can spend a hundred bucks and probably grab you like 12, 13 courses and that'll get you every that'll get you everything you need to know before you even test for a certification. And then in the meantime, say, you know, save your 200 bucks. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do and I, and, and Mary, if you're still here, like I, 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 I didn't do the deadline because of, because of time constraints and I had to be somewhere the day of the conference, but um, I, I, I'm going to basically give a talk on like how, how, how to, how to flex in hacking on a budget, like, you know, how to ball on a budget. Um, you know, if you have and you can use you can use certain things to your advantage like if your company allows you to to reimburse you for stuff you know use that like i got my first 6 7 certifications and i spent $300 because i came out of pocket that first $300 and um i got my boss to say oh yeah because and no one else took advantage of that opportunity again they were all they were all college cert college uh, you know, college graduates and whatever. And they, they never, you know, they never took it, took advantage of it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So I paid my first $300 grab, grab the certification, uh, passed it, brought it to them. They reimbursed me. I took that same $300 and put it into the next one and put it into the next one. Luckily, you know, Microsoft and CompTIA at the time weren't super expensive. I, I don't think they're, I still don't think they're super expensive as opposed to some other ones. And I just kept going and kept going and and basically I, I came out of pocket one time because they reimbursed me. So these are little things that you can do to get to get those certifications. And like I said, you spend 300 bucks one time. You spend, you know, you wait for a Udemy sale, black or a black, a black Friday Udemy sale when it's like the whole month of November and you grab a bunch of those. Um, you know, they have SANS, they have SANS sponsorships. You know, everybody talks about SANS being super expensive. I was one of the people who beat on SANS all the damn time. And they were like, do you know we have this program? And I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> right? So <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many times uh, Delisha has uh, hopped into like a clubhouse room with us and been like, you know, you know, we have this uh, Cyber Women's uh, Diversity Academy. You know, you know, we have this uh, Virginia Skills Diversity Academy. You know, we have, um, uh, you know, this ca- one for California. They have opportunities for people um, to be able to sign up um, and to get those certifications free. You know, like I agree yeah. that it's stupid expensive, but there are ways to get around it, you know? Yeah, I beat on Sands for a while. Sh- and shout out to Sands because, you know what, they they were like, hey. Um, and I'm like, oh. My bad. And they're like, and they're like, it's okay. We get it all the time. So it was like, it was, it was real cool. Um, but yeah, um, I see Mary Galloway's already promoting it and letting y'all do like a co-sponsored event here about the talk. So, um, Bic just dropped in. Shout out to Bic. So, yep. And there, and there, there goes Bic. So, um, so yeah, let's do it. Like I said, yeah, when I, when we, we can do that talk and, and, and make that happen, I, I would, I would, love to so um we're gonna which which brings me to the next thing we're gonna get to the q a but there's a few like three more questions i have to ask you ladies and i know you guys get this all the time um you know with with with, with new members coming in and, and new people that you're mentoring and stuff but if someone were to come to you and say 
I'm super interested in tech and cybersecurity. I have no idea where to start. Can you give me three tips? What would they be? Um, I'd say uh, try hack me. So get the 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 ethical hacking in. You know, it it has like both red and blue team things in there. Um, I'd say um, capture the flag. Capture the flag gives you exposure to a lot of different areas of cybersecurity to try to help you figure out what it is that you're interested in. So like you can get a little bit of everything in there. Um, and then I'd say talk to somebody who's doing whatever it is that you think you might want to do. You know, find like a mentor or somebody who can, you know, pr help to direct your goals so that you're not, you know, doing a little bit of everything. Nice. I think Rebecca dropped off. I think her signal was acting up. Let me see. Yeah, her signal dropped off. All right, so uh, we'll wait till she comes back. But yeah, like I said, um, yeah, I like those. I like those three. Yeah. Tr so you said try hack me. Yep. Asking someone who's in the field. And what was the third one? Capture the flags. Capture the flags. Involved in capture the flags. Yeah. Yeah. That that the, the hands on stuff. No. Again, it's the, the hands on, especially in cybersecurity, is is crucial. All right. Well. Um, uh, no. Okay. It looks like she dropped off. So, um, what are your goals personally, professionally for, or for, for black girls hack, um, for, for the rest of 2021? 2021. Okay. So my goal always and forever is world domination. So I'm trying to take over, um, for the nine, nine, 2000, um, specifically <laughs> I understood my that reference. Goal, <laughs> my end goal is to be chief information security officer of somebody's fortune company um mm. I think for 2021 um I'd like to see you know some of the squad be able to get their their foot in the door um we are trying to get as many people certified as possible so we've got like some partnerships with some of the the certification providers to get like some discounted prices so we're trying to get some folks um, certification so they can be able to get some jobs. So like, I want to see some of those folks start to, you know, get their first jobs. And then, you know, once they get to where they need to be, they can start to try to give back. So I'd like to see that um, take place at some point. Okay. Up, oh, she's back. All right, Rebecca, just in time, what are your goals personally, professionally for Black Girls Hack or whatever for, for the rest of 2021? Goals. What is your goal? Uh, immediately. Ah, uh, you're breaking up again, and it's all. Really enjoy being exclusive. Uh, we, you broke up. What was your first thing? Immediately. Oh, my first thing was that immediately I'm trying to get summertime fine. That's not here, not there. But <laughs> summertime fine. <laughs> <high. laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not mad. Post, post at least one thirst trap photo on the gram. Um, and then <laughs> professionally, <laughs> really enjoy being a solution. So. I want to help people achieve their goals. Um, and I know sometimes people will get on me for being, oh, that's altruistic, come on, whatever. But we have enough selfish people in the world. It's okay for me to care about other people. World domination plans, I want to help. That would be like for us to continue to grow and expand our people. That's what's up. Thanks, All right. Bro. So final, final question. Uh, if you're familiar with the show, I asked to say every single guest, um, what is your why? My why um, I'm trying to, to make a difference. I'm trying to um, be the change that, that I want to see. Um, yes. I want to, to, for my nieces and nephews, you know, in the next generation of people, like I want them to be able to see, a lot of black people who are doing the thing um and i i, I want to be able to make a difference um in the world so that you know when i end up leaving you know someone will say you know hey i made a difference in something um whatever that is I don't, and i don't know what that is yet but at some point that that that's my why okay. i want to leave an indelible mark on this world there needs to be a sign that my life mattered and there a change change was affected you know um i guess my biggest why is why not if i think that something should be done why shouldn't i be the one to do it 
Um, if I think we should be helped, why shouldn't I be the one to help? So that's my why. You see how dope she is? <laughs> it, yeah, I, yeah. It, it, it can it can be done. It can be us, and it has to be. I love it. Ladies, I thank you so much for coming in here and, and, and dropping the bucket of gems on, on everybody here. I know the pack is in the chat. They love it and appreciate it. Um, please keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I know we, we talked offline about, about, you know, me coming on the platform and, and showing some love and support. I'm all for it. Um, apparently, uh, my advisor, Mary Galloway just pretty much looked like she booked me for a second appearance as well. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch about, I guess, showing up twice in the near future. But um, so again, I thank you. Like I said, everything that y'all are doing, please, everybody here, if you haven't familiarize yourselves with the black girls hack group please go check them out um blackgirlshack.org and yes oh yeah i for, i didn't even met, uh talk about it being a 501c3 please real quick oh yeah we just got our 501c3 um so what that means thank you thank you i'm so excited um so what that means is that you know people can um make donations to the organization and those d donations are tax deductible so you can get a little bit something back for your taxes um and we're trying to to make a difference, you know. So we're trying to, you know, we're not trying to make a profit. We're trying to basically help bridge the gap so that the squad can be able to take over the world. So um, definitely, please, if you can support us, um, if you don't have funds, please feel free to volunteer, um, mentor, you know, join our our our, our leadership team. Um, we need folks. Like like I said, I, I'm limited to what I can teach based on what I know, but um, I know that you guys know everything. So you know, please, let's work together and take over the world. Yes, uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, everybody watching, let's let's be that change that we all talk about. Let's be the change that we want to see. Um, let's share our resources, you know, share our platforms, share our knowledge. You know, it it, it doesn't benefit you to have to, to hoard the knowledge and keep it to yourself. And um, to Beck's but point, I, think, I was about to say, ahead. I thank you for having us, though. Like this is like super dope for you to share your platform with us. Um, like I appreciate, I see you out here doing big things. So I absolutely love that you are, you know, are helping us out. No, the pleasure is all mine. Like I, like I, like I told you offline and I, I'm not scared to say it. There are a lot of people who, who talk about it. And then there are a lot of people who are leading by example. And you ladies are definitely leading by example. Um, and if I can amplify that leadership and if I can amplify someone who's trying to do the right thing the right way, then by all means let's let let's set let's set up the time and, 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 and the schedule. So um and uh like I said again just thank thank you for joining. Um and I forgot what I was saying prior to that. <laughs> Did you have some uh, sponsorship things that you need to drop a couple of oh, other? Oh yeah, I'm 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 gonna get to that before we get to the Q and A. Oh, but let me just do this one real quick. If you if, if you like the shirt, it's it's my own design, and you can go check that out on um on my T Public store. I'll put the link in the chat as soon as I can find it. Here it is, the merch store. So yeah, um, I have a bunch of designs there. I have that one. I have the only hacks. I have the Wolf Pack. Pick your pack. Um. Try, um, shirts so go check those out and again everything goes back to supporting the show um you know when things open back up like i said i i'd love to you know probably meet up at a conference at some point and we can do this i want to bring when it's safe to because they open they open and shit up now and i'm not sure if it's safe yet i'm doing a double dutch like i'm trying to figure out when i want to jump in jump back into public but i i want to bring <laughs> at some point my goal is to bring bring the show on the road and like show up to conferences and, and, and do InfoSec like on site somewhere. So um, we're gonna, you know, hopefully we can make that happen. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Rebecca and Tanisha from the Black Girls Hat Group. And now we will get into the Q&A. So let me just put that in there, ah, Q&A time. So let's see here. Cause I saw one earlier. So somebody had asked uh, a question about having locks. Um, oh yes, yes, it, Israel. Um, and, I, and 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 sh and again, shout out to the pack. And this is why, this is why I love y'all because like, 
the pack is like its own thing going on. Hopefully, y'all are paying attention to the show, but they be having their own little conversations and and the love and support that they showed Israel in there. But yeah, about ha- about him wanting to cut it, right? Um, no, I've had mine for seven years, so um, pull him back in a, a ponytail, you'll be fine. And if anybody and if anybody tells you otherwise, tell them to kick rocks. That that's the best way I can say it because my kids are probably watching at this point. So, <laughs> Um, I, I don't want to say what I want to say because, I, like I said, I think they're online at this point, probably watching the show. So yeah, we're talking yeah, about so. diversity. So you know, diversity is differences in people. This is differences in hairstyles. It's not like a status quo. You know, so like if they can't accept you for whoever and whatever it is that you are, then you know they don't deserve you. Right. Definitely. Um, like you can you can be professional with locks. Like you can speak professionally you can be professional you can be in the boardrooms if anybody has a problem with it tell them kick rocks if they say look if they say it verbally tell them speak to your lawyer just saying (laughs) right just saying um where are we um i saw one hold on saying no they were talking about the sand stuff Ah, person-centered cyber. Another friend of the show, Cheryl Abram. Shout out to Cheryl, and 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 if you're still watching, tell the tell the professor I said hello. Says true. Our community largely feels as if sharing means losing. We have to change our understanding of what it means to share before we will get rid of this fear of loss. No, I, absolutely. We we have to we have to get used to to being okay with. It's not even, it's not even being making yourselves vulnerable. But I, but sometimes that's what I equate it to, like you know, like like sharing knowledge is, is is leaving yourself open to some type of vulnerability. I don't know what it is, but I, I, I that's the only thing I can compare it to. And I think that we once you get over that, you know, and and just just know that whatever it is you're doing um, is helping somebody, right? Um, I think that. Friend, uh... Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say that I think that a lot of times we think that knowledge is power and that we think that in order for us to have the power that, you know, we kind of have to have the knowledge and nobody else can have it. You know, like there's only, you know, one room at the top for one. And I tell people all the time, like, I'll see you at the top. Like, I'll, I'll you know, we can take over the world. There's no reason why we can't all take over the world. Um, but people try to act like, you know, the space in the world is limited and there's only room for, you know, one or two people. When in reality, there's no reason why we can't all be you know, whatever your goal is, rich is rich or powerful or, you know, lead hackers or whatever the case may be. Um, it's just a matter of sharing that information and, and helping to, I think Beck said earlier, like lift as you rise, you know, like people yeah. feel like you have to wait until you took taken over the world before you can start to give back, before you can start to donate. When in reality, there's nothing that says that you can't take people along the way with you as you go, you know, yeah. like you don't have to wait until you've gotten there. You can just bring them along now. Yeah. Um, Rachel Toback said that last week. She said, uh, go, "Go ahead, go ahead, Rebecca. Sorry." Um, okay, I was saying I think uh, people also put a whole dare to knowledge or information that they know because I feel like it makes them special. Um, I always tell people, "Yeah, you can hire someone else to do my job, but they don't do it the way I do." And I think that's what makes us unique. It's not necessarily that I know more than the next person. It's just the way I do it. My little special sauce <laughs> is what makes me unique. Um, and I think if more people thought that way, they wouldn't be uh, holding what they know on the blocking group. Yeah, and I, I think, and I think the with, with sharing knowledge, you learn different perspectives, right? Um, even I mean, yeah, you could say that generally with anything in life, but I think especially if you're talking tech or you're talking cybersecurity, certain things, you may know you may know a different attack vector or you may know a different technique that I don't know or that I didn't think of. Right. And this is how we make ourselves better. Like, like you said, uh, iron steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron. Um, you know, you, by, by sharing this information, you can say, Oh, okay. I didn't think of it that way. Or, or, um, shout, shout out to Cody Winkler, um, CW InfoSec. Like, what he does on his channel um, shows how you can ch- chain attacks in ways that other people don't really think about, right? So, for example, 
you do a web, you're working on a web app and you get cross-site scripting. All right, cool. You got cross-site scripting, but nine times out of 10, if it's a reflective cross-site scripting, it's not going to matter because you're only doing that on your own machine. But what Cody does is he leverages it to turn into a, um, to, to an RCE exploit. And now, now that matters, right? I never, I mean, I never really thought of it that way. Like I, I always try to chain cross-site scripting and maybe cross-site request forgery attacks. But to show what he did, I'm like, I never thought of that, right? Um, you know, um, Harley, Infinite Logins, he, he, he shows a lot of stuff and and teaches, teaches pen testing stuff in his own way. That's almost like a choose your own path type thing that I just think is freaking like revolutionary, right? And, and I think that's going to attract more eyes because of how he essentially gamified pen testing because now he did he took a lot of time and he did these videos where he's doing cts or, or hack the box machines and it says should i do an end map scan or should i go you know run this and then if you click whatever link you click it shows that next video and it goes oh okay well that didn't work let's go back here and it's like it's like those old books back in the day where it's like oh you want to jump in, you want to go fight the dragon, go to page 300 and see what happened. And you, and, and now you go back like, and you died. Okay. So I don't want to do that. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. But I, but these are all different resources that it may not work for some, but it'll work for others. So I think, you know, we definitely have to, to, to share that. Um, hold on. Trillionaire 2021 says, how do you feel about WGU University? So I'm think I'm, a, I'm assuming he means Western Governors University. Um, <clears throat> I like the concept behind it. If, 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 if I go back to school or go to school, cause I really didn't really, I can't say go back. I wasn't there long enough to, to say I was there to go back to anything. But, um, if I, if I go to school, I'd probably do that because I like what they did with the certifications um, equating to college credit. So I, I think they're pretty good. And I think DFI or Diva said that she actually got her master's through them. So, so yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, if I had it to, to do over again, um, I would definitely do WGU. And the reason being is that, you know, like you said, they tied the certifications um, to the, the classes. So, you know, the other thing that I like about it is that you can, you know, if you pass the, the exams quicker than it takes, you know, four year degree, then you get done sooner, you know, so I think I can appreciate that. So, yeah. um, you know, it, and it still counts as a as a degree, plus you, you come out with a whole bunch of certifications, which, you know, checks off those two of those things, you know, I've got an education, I've got the certifications. Um, and then in some cases, you also have like the, the hands on experience. So I, I like their model. Um, for you know kind of building all of those things in there yep all right so trill up uh, looks like okay rebecca's back <clears throat> so okay next question goes to you rebecca trillionaire 2021 says what certification did you struggle did, did you struggle getting well seeing as how i haven't I've, I've gotten certs in the products that we use like i have a certain sumo i have a certain one trust um I've done a couple new plural site. The struggle bus one has been a security plus just because I haven't gotten it yet. Um, as you said about, you know, teaching through failure, it's definitely been when I was like, I know this is my job. <laughs> and I got my job. And I'm pretty good at it, if I can say so myself. And I took it once. And uh, <laughs> based on that score, it was like, uh, you sure you got <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> um, so just as you said, like I have a new plan of attack, and it was it really was all those things. Um, I worked late, and I went in early, barely put any time towards studying. I headache when I want to take, and these aren't excuses, but these are know your surroundings. You know, like what all went into it. So that is my, my uh, most recent struggle. Because uh, I plan on taking it again. I feel like I'm setting myself up. So I, I rather, uh -huh, <laughs> guess who's back? Did that miss? Then to be like, yeah, I'll stay okay. That has been a struggle. Okay. And Tanisha, what about you? Just for oh. the actual test. Okay. Yeah. No, go ahead. You're good. You're good. 
I, I'd say like it's not security related, it's more management related, but the PMP I think was the hardest test that I've taken just because like it was literally like I had I sat down in like Bus Boys and Poets for like six hours with one of my friends, you know, rewriting the stuff over and over again so that I would remember like this little table. Um and that test was crazy. And I, I literally walked around for like an entire I want to say two weeks to a month telling everybody that I was a pimp. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like Rebecca posted on LinkedIn, she's like, Tanisha, the cyber pimp. I was like, I accept that because I worked hard <laughs> for my pimp. <laughs> nice. Um, for me, um, it was the OSCP, which I failed. Um, and the CISSP, which I actually passed, um, b mainly because those were two different certifications, right? Um, I had taken, at that point, I had taken so many multiple choice exams, and then I did all hands-on stuff. So I did my, you know, the CEH practical, the CPT. I was practicing for the OSCP. I was doing capture the flag stuff so everything was just hands-on and then to kind of go back to the procedural organization stuff you know risk and compliance and all of that um and that was a grind like like that certificate like that that whole experience preparing for the cissp like I, when i passed i literally like ran out of there thinking let me go before they change their mind <laughs> um and it was like right i remember it was right before thanksgiving and i went home and i think i slept for like like a day and a half because i had i had did so much to prepare like i i bought like two two books and if you've seen the cissp books they're like this so i bought two of them read them from front to back highlighted them made my own notes downloaded the cissp sunflower which is like this cram sheet document color coded and everything did that with the notes with the with the um flashcards that I wrote and then I still didn't feel prepared so I took a class I no I did a cyberary class for free then I paid for a class but my dumb ass didn't pay attention and realized that the class was in Las Vegas so it was on West Coast time so and and of course this teacher wanted to teach till 1 in the morning their time which was 4 in the morning my time so yeah so by the time I passed that exam it was like I slept I slept for like a day and a half and I will never test for that certification again. <laughs> so you stay like on top of your CPEs? Every day. Every day. <laughs> every day I'm doing, I'm on a talk. I'm giving, a, if I'm giving a talk, if I'm watching a talk, I'm getting those credits. If I take another class to this day. <laughs> so, all right, let's see what other questions we have. Um, or if you want to certify to anonymous, no, well, see, I'm Ty says, how can you learn the SQL injection techniques, the individual codes? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, don't learn the individual codes, learn the basics. So single quote, double quote to just see if it's vulnerable, you know, learn the stuff to see, to test if it's vulnerable and then you can download SQL injection word sheets and literally either copy and paste or throw them into a burp intruder and let 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 that go or use SQL map and and let that go. If you can find a vulnerable endpoint or a vulnerable parameter, do not spend the time because now because if you learn every individual SQL query, you're talking about Microsoft SQL, you're talking about MySQL, you're talking about post Postgres. You're talking about NoSQL, <laughs> so you know uh, Oracle. Huh? Yeah, I was about to say PL SQL Oracle. Yeah, yeah, Oracle. Like you're so. All you need to know know is test it to see if it's vulnerable. Figure out the database which SQL Map can do, and then throw a word list at it. Um, if it's if you're trying to test for union based. Again, you can learn it. There's, you know, that that's that's simple. That's simple to do. But if not, um, cheat sheets for the win. So, like, work smarter, not harder. I don't know if you ladies have anything you want to to add to it. 
I was just going to say there's a tool for it. Like if there's a tool for it, I don't, I don't see the point in, um, you know, learning the specifics of it. Um, there's use the tool. Yep. No, definitely. Don't, don't kill yourself learning all the SQL commands, please. You'll burn yourself out like four times and you still won't learn all of them. So Jay Cunningham says, any advice on getting into digital forensics? Yes. Go follow DFIR Diva. <laughs> That'd be my advice as well. Go, go check her out. Um, I, I wanted to get into forensics. Um, when I went in the Northeast, apparently to get into digital forensics, you had to be law enforcement and that wasn't happening. So, um, they didn't do any like contracting out to civilian people, but I took a, I took a digital forensics course. I actually got, I actually, I'm actually certified in digital forensics, but it's, but like you said before, it's one of those, if you don't use it, you lose it type things. Um, I try to, I try to do little things every here and there and try to like refresh my, my memory on like autopsy and stuff like that. But, um, I actually took the course because I felt it would make me a better pen tester. Um, if I knew what the forensics people were looking for on an exploited machine, then I would know as a pen tester what to do to avoid it. So like making sure I don't do anything that logged any events or making sure I deleted the logs or as my, um, my very first pen testing instructor, Keytron Evans taught, um, infect the computer when you're done and you know how they tell you to cover your tracks. If you drop a nasty virus on it, what's the first thing it is going to do? <laughs> they're going to pull it off the network and they're going to wipe it and, 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 and refresh it. So now they just covered your tracks for you. But, um, but from the forensics thing, I, I love that course because uh, for the practical exam, they gave you, it was almost like they gave you this, this, this uh, hard drive that you had to image and copy and, and go through the investigation. So it kind of put yourself in the mindset of someone investigating the crime. And then you had to write it up and make sure you followed a uh, chain of custody. But um I might go back into it one day when I'm done with pen testing, if that ever happens, but I don't have that answer. So go, go holla at DFI or Diva. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Kalila says, I am certain I am failing this pen test plus beta exam this weekend, but you never know. Hey, you, yeah, listen, I've been seeing some of the stuff you did with JB. Um, you'll, you'll be fine. And if not, then you just figure out where you were weak and, and, and keep going. Yeah, I mean, like it's. Uh, uh, I registered for the pen test plus too. Um, you know, because they put out a deal that was like fifty dollars. I was like fifty dollars. You know, I, I'm gonna try my hand. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, again, you see the good thing I think about seeing um, a, a certification, even if you fail it, is that you know what to expect for the next time. So you can, you know, try to figure out, you know, where your holes are. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Infosec House says, "Got to collect the CPEs when you can." No, absolutely absolutely uh endless journey says thoughts about the cysa do you have any thoughts on that um it it if you work for the government like i know it'll get you a like a higher level than say like the security plus um but it it's really not it's not really not adding much value i don't think um just yeah. my two cents no, I, I agree. Um, I think it it's beneficial to have, and it builds off of some of the stuff from the Security Plus. I, but is it necessary? I it I it just I think it, it depends on what path you're 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 taking. But I, I don't think it's one that you really have to worry about like immediately. So. I think that's that's just my take on it. So I'm going to scroll through real quick, but in the meantime, um, Rebecca did have to to, to log off. Um, but Tanisha, while I'm searching through the question to see if there's any other questions, tell them how to find you or or Black Girls Hack. Um, I don't want you finding me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a room. You're in a room full of hackers. <laughs> I know, right? I saw Anonymous in here. Like, they already know. Like, they're probably camped outside <laughs> at this point. It's, it's all good. Um, so, um, at Black Girls Hack, everywhere on social media, um, blackgirlshack.org. Um, I am um, at Miss Tanisha um, on most of the social media sites. But, uh, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm, I'm lurking around the slacks of Black Girls Hack, you know, trying to see what's going on with them, see if they need anything. So, 
you know, you can always catch me in the Slack if nothing else. Absolutely. I uh, see anonymous. I guess. Oh, that that was a conversation he was having with Mary. How is CompTIA going to call themselves a security training company if they aren't even going to teach the blessings and security the true cloud can bring to our lives? Yes, anonymous, the the, the disciple of 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 cloud technology. <laughs> All right. So uh, if anyone else has any other questions, going once, going twice, and sold. So ladies and gentlemen, everybody watching, this has been another episode of InfoSec Unplugged. I want to thank my guest, Tanisha Martin. And I also want to, uh, I'm sorry, CW InfoSec does have one, does have a question. So before I go through the rundown, go ahead, sir. Never mind. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, uh, Infosec House says, no question, just keep up the awesome content. Uh, Infosec House, I appreciate the love. Please make sure you check out the other episodes. Like, subscribe, leave comments, please. We're trying to get that YouTube algorithm to... to, to to, to amplify this because again it's, it's not it's not even just about me it's about all the people that i've had on that definitely need to kind of get some more exposure and amplify representation out. yes absolutely so ladies and gentlemen everybody watching this has been another episode of infosec unplugged i have been your host d jacks this has been my guest tanisha and i also want to thank our other guests rebecca and shout out to the black girls hack again if you haven't done so already Please check them out. Go to blackgirlshack.org. Follow them on all the social media stuff. Check out one of their Zoom meetings where they're doing the CTF stuff. Show some support. Um, if you guys want to volunteer, give a talk, you know, please do so. Volunteer. They they can use the help and they can use the expertise. They can get, you know, they, you know, but let 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 let's get let's get some more people in here and and and, and get it right. Um, you know, be the change you want to see. Keep going. Always bet on yourself and do the work. Um, if you like everything that's been going on, please like and subscribe or follow me. If you're on Twitch, follow me on Twitch. Um, I will be taking a small break after my episode next week. Um, it's summertime. My kids are off and I know everybody's going to be doing like their summer conference thing. So I'm going to, you know, do that and 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 hopefully y'all can come back with some cool stories because I don't think I'll be doing any conferences uh, in person this year. I'm not sure unless um, Wicked Six is going on. Hint, hint, Mary Galloway. <coughs> hint, but anyway, um, but like I said, uh, you get again. Check out the merch store on T Public. Let me just do this in the chat. Uh, check out the merch store on T Public. Go on, you know, Udemy. Uh, get some courses, use those links. And also, if you want to support me directly, you can buy me a coffee. Um, I was, Before it wasn't really, you know, used for coffee. It was used to support the show. But I've been ingesting a lot of coffee lately, and I probably could use some. So uh, please buy me a coffee and show some support. Um, I'm going to be doing more on that side of things, almost like a Patreon thing for like exclusive content. Um, I'm working on a Discord channel. I'm actually contracting my son to make sure my Discord channel is um, is up to par. So that should be uh, coming up in the next month or so. So again, I want to thank everybody for watching. I, you know, I thank the pack. I love y'all. Tanisha, like I said, anytime, and we'll 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 iron that out, and I'll, I'll be there. And like I said, Mary Dunn booked me for the for for the talk, so I'll probably be giving the talk there as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you tune in next week, where my guest will be cybersecurity professional and host of the Security and Color podcast, Dominique West. I'm um, have her on, and then like I said, that'll probably be the last one for a little bit. So make sure you don't miss that one and show her the same support that you've been showing all these other guests, especially with Tanisha and Rebecca here tonight. And I will see y'all next week.